Welcome to the video. If you're new here, my name is Chris and I build productivity apps. I usually focus on one productivity app video. So today we're focusing on Ellie. Quick context, Ellie is a daily planning app. It's basically your to-do list and calendar combined. So if you're someone that likes to time box and plan your day, you should go check it out. It's been a minute since I've done one of these day in the lifestyle videos, but I honestly really miss them. I'm gonna take you guys along this weekend. We're gonna work on this Notion integration and I actually have a friend who's gonna be working on this with me. Even if we don't get it done though, it should still be an interesting video. So that's what we're gonna be doing today. So let's talk about this Notion integration for a second. So one of the most requested features is a Notion integration. What people want is the ability to import things from Notion into Ellie. So for me, in my Notion, I have this content planner. This is just where I do my social media planning. I have all my social media posts here and I'd love to be able to take these and add them into Ellie when I'm ready to work on them. When I check off a task, maybe it could move this from one of these to publish. So that's how I would personally use it. At a high level, that's what we're trying to build here. Some sort of way for people to import things from Notion into Ellie so that they can work on them. Maybe if we have time, we can even do a two-way sync where when you complete something or you move something, it can actually reflect the changes back into Notion. We'll see how hard that is, but if we can do it, I think it would be pretty cool. I'm gonna get started trying to think through how we're actually gonna do this, come up with a plan. Then in a couple hours, my friend Vinny is gonna join us and we're just gonna start working on this together. I cut it out, but Luna's been barking the entire time I'm filming. So I'm gonna go take her out really fast and then we're gonna go get started. She's so comfortable. Also, this is where I film, by the way. This is that wall behind all my videos. And then there's Luna. I'm someone that would probably be importing multiple Notion databases like the content calendar that I showed you guys. I have an Ellie bug tracker Notion page. I personally would want each of those to be mapped to a specific list in the app. So the way that the integration is gonna work is you can map a Notion database to a specific Ellie list and then choose which items to import from that database. Honestly, this doesn't sound too complicated. I think we can get this done this weekend. But yeah, let's go whiteboard and talk this through. The front end's actually pretty simple. It's basically just a settings page. And the things that we need to collect are which Notion database we're listening to, what Ellie list we want the task to be sent in. We need to know which properties we're filtering on for the Notion database. Let's say there's a status property. We only want to import tasks into this list where status is incomplete. That's an example of a filter. We, we need a way for them to map properties between Notion and Ellie so we know what corresponds to label, what corresponds to description, what corresponds to completion. That's why this one's important. So these are all the settings we need to collect. And then the second thing is this sync engine, which is going to live in the back end. It imports new tasks and it keeps them in sync. I know that was a lot, but hopefully I explained that well. So this is what this is gonna look like at a high level. So the way we're gonna split this up is I'm gonna work on the front end side, which is basically just the settings page. Hopefully that won't be too bad. And then Finney's gonna work on the sync engine in the back end and try to make some progress on that. So that's the game plan. I'm gonna get started on the front end while I wait for him to get here. All right, so this is Finney. He is going to be helping me with the Notion integration. Dude, just look at the just look at the computer. <laughs> okay, so this is Finney. He's extremely camera shot. This is like the eighth take that we're doing here. He doesn't know how to intro himself. Are you shy on camera? We'll keep <laughs> you want to intro yourself? Yeah. Um. Nice to meet you. <laughs> what do I say? I, I, I'm so awkward. I'm actually, no, that's okay. That's I'm okay. I'm not even acting. I'm that's okay. That's okay. That's okay. He's going to be helping me out with the integration. He was in the last video. I'm going to go show him what I worked on right now. And uh, yeah, we're going to go through that. Can I film you? Or <laughs> is this a one way thing? No, this is a one way thing. Oh my God. <laughs> we're going to go look at some of the stuff that I was working on here. And then yeah, he'll start working on the sync engine that we talked about. Can you actually like bring me up to speed on how far? Sit. Good girl. Huh? Oh, good job. Oh, so wow, cute. this is so good. Okay. So I made some progress. Luckily, we actually have an integrations page built in because we have a Slack integration. You can go here, you can click manage and manage your Slack integration. So we're gonna apply the same exact thing to the Notion integration. And I already made these cards from before because it would look really sad if there was just this one Slack integration. So I actually made this one functional. So here's what we have right now. This is just hard coded, it's not connected to anything. But now, let's say you do have the Notion integration enabled. Now when you click it, you'll be able to see what workspace you have connected and then a list of your connected databases. I'm hoping this is clear, but the way it works is the content calendar database in Notion is mapped to my personal Ellie list. And then you can revoke workspace access by clicking this button. Okay. 
Okay, another update. Again, none of this is functioning, all hard-coded, but I added this add connection button. So this is how you can add new connections. It'll probably just pop up to a new item or something. I also added some functionality to the dropdown. Here are the options you're gonna have for the dropdown. You're gonna be able to edit the connection settings. I'll have a way to resync your imported task manually. If you think the integration isn't working and it's kind of slow, you can just go in here to manually re-import things. I plan on allowing users to delete all imported tasks. This is gonna be important just in case you messed up your filtering or something and you accidentally import a thousand items and you're like, oh God, I have to go and delete these one by one. You can now instead just do that here. I also started creating the UI to edit the connection setting. This is what it looks like right now. Again, none of this is real. Here's where you can select which Notion database we're importing from. Then you can select which LE task we're importing into. So I plan on only allowing one filter at a time for now, but you can actually filter on a bunch of different properties. So here's an example of filtering on a select field. So when you select this field, you'll be able to see all the different options and this would be pulled from Notion. You can also filter on a checkbox field, and then you can also filter on an assignment field. Only pull in items that are assigned to me. So these are the three fields that we're gonna support for now. Here's the mapping section, and we're just gonna allow mapping on the task completion status for now. So here's an example of mapping the in stock field in Notion to LE task completion. So when in stock is checked off, that means that the task is completed in LE, and when it is not checked off, it means it's incomplete in LE. And then here's the sync changes button, whether you want it in able to way sync or not. So yeah, that's where the settings UI is right now. So we're going on the API. Finney's going to go implement OAuth right now so we can get these access tokens, and then we can actually start testing the yeah. Notion API. Once we have the access tokens, then we can start using the Notion API. Okay, good. Sweet. Then make nice. Okay, cool. Let's go do it. Okay, something that we figured out, Notion actually does not have webhooks. That means that Notion isn't gonna tell us when things are updated. We're probably gonna have to pull it maybe yeah. every couple seconds. Yeah. Wait, there's a, you can only do three requests per second. Oh, per integration though. Per integration? Wait, this is not, wait, wait, no, no. It's not per access token, it's per integration. Dude, there's right? no way. That would be, three requests per seconds is so small for an entire application. Yeah. There's no way. I don't know. This is something we need to take a look at. So we're gonna go to this one coffee shop. It's usually pretty crowded. So if it's too crowded, there's a backup one. It's honestly super awkward filming this like anywhere, but these two coffee shops I think will be pretty good. You wanna come with us? <laughs> okay, let's go. Does it make you so uncomfortable on camera? Yeah. This is my girlfriend. So she's gonna join us in the video. She has an art Instagram, she's doing Etsy, and this is her studio. So she'll be joining us in the video. <gasps> Good job. Okay. Good job. And she's the <laughs> Yeah, that's what I need. I need a drone. I need, oh, it, hey, this is it. This is the camera, wow. This is the camera I have. Oh, this one looks kind of nice. DJI Osmo Action 4. What do you think of this camera? Do you like it? I love Park? this camera. This camera is amazing. What do you use DJI for? Pocket 3. Pocket 3 is the one. Pocket 3. Yeah, this is the one I have. Yeah. So we made a lot of progress. We were able to get real data into the front end. So the settings page now has real data. We're gonna head back right now and I'll show you guys what we were able to get done. So here's the settings page. This is my actual Notion workspace. Again, this is what it looks like. And we have the content calendar here. This database is called contents. And so we can see that it's import items from this Notion database contents and into this LE list called personal. So right now I only support a couple fields like status, checklist, checkbox. The only property that's actually valid is this status property. And there's a bunch of different options here from idea to publish. These are the options we just saw in Notion. Now I have this set up where it's going to pull items where the status is planned. And then I also set up the mappings. When it, the status is published, that represents the task being completed. And when the status is planned, that represents the task being incomplete. And then I have sync turned on here. So two-way sync works. So if I update LE, it'll update Notion and then vice versa. And then let me show you guys what the data structure looks like for this item right here. So this represents what we were just looking at. 
and you can see here we have the two-way sync enabled we have the workspace id we actually store a copy of all the properties and everything and i'll explain why that's important later then we store the le list that we're going to be importing to this is what the filter looks like it looks really complicated this is all the data that notion requires when we try to filter on a database and this is an array so we can keep adding multiple things like status as planned when it's assigned to me and we can just add an infinite number of these things here. And then conditions, this represents the mapping that we have here. So like when task is completed, its status is published. Complete on LE is true when this notion property equals this notion value. So that's what this object represents. So at this point, we got everything connected. There've just been so many little edge cases with this. What happens if someone changes the property type or just deletes it altogether? Because given how flexible notion is, anyone can just change the properties at any time. So now I realize the app has to handle that. So that's what I'm working on right now. When a property is deleted or invalid, we now highlight it so you can see oh, this property is no longer available and it'll ask you to change it or delete it. This one was a little bit challenging and it's a huge reason why I have to store more data like the property type here, even though the Notion filter doesn't technically use it. So what I can do is compare it against the real data that's in Notion and then use that to figure out what was deleted. So that was another thing I added. The logic for rendering the filters and all of these components was just very challenging with Notion's data structure and how flexible it is. There were a ton of bugs and edge cases that I had to fix there. Aside from that, the major stuff is kind of done, but right now the filtering does work. We've been manually testing it, so we added an endpoint that we can call, and every time we call it, it'll pull Notion, run the filters, and then add any relevant tasks into Ellie. But the plan is to take that function and then put it on a webhook so it runs every single minute and then pulls for new data. We're definitely gonna have to be careful because of the API limit, which according to the docs is three requests per second, and it's very possible for a user to actually hit that pretty easily if they have multiple Notion databases connected. Digging around online, everyone says you have to implement something called exponential backoff. We're gonna go ahead and implement that later, but for now, the Notion syncing does actually work. Let me show you guys what that looks like. So again, we're hooked up to the contents database and we're going to import tasks into my personal list and it's where the status is planned. So if we go to my content calendar, this is the contents database. Right now, nothing has the status planned. So nothing has been imported. But if I change this from idea to planned, now this should be imported. And if we look over here, boom you could see that it imported this item. And this is it, come build an app with me day three, come build an app with me day three. Here's another cool thing I added. So when a task is imported from Notion, we add this little Notion icon so that you know that it came from Notion. When you click on it, we also have a deep link here and a button so you can open it directly in Notion. But yeah, very happy this actually works right now. Just trying to break it right now, work on a couple edge cases, but very happy with the progress so far. So Finney was able to get the two-way sync working. Now we can update a task in Ellie and it'll reflect back in Notion. Let's take a look at this example. So again, it says come build an app with me, number three, Notion. I'm gonna edit this to say Notion integration. And if we go back to Notion, boom, it was so fast. It already updated instantly. I actually don't know if it goes the other way. So if I put this back to just Notion. It does, okay, so it does actually sync back the other way too. I think completion should work as well. So based on my settings, if I mark a task as complete, it should make the status published. So again, the status is planned, so I'm gonna mark it as complete, and the status just changed to published. Let's see if this works. I marked it as incomplete, and it's back to planned, perfect. Okay, so the two-way sync works perfectly. I think we're gonna go get dinner right now. This is a really good stopping point. We've been at this for a few hours. So this will be a really good break. And then when we come back, I think this thing is like 90% done. So we'll just finish out the last 10%, continue to try to break it. Yeah, we might actually be able to get this released by tomorrow, I think. All right, let's go get some food. Let's do it. Made a ton of progress yesterday, but still got a little bit left. So we're gonna finish it up today. Just given how many edge cases we've encountered though, I really think we need to do a pretty thorough beta test period for this. Once we're done today, I'm gonna take the entire next week to give this to beta testers, maybe like 10 people, and just have them use it and try to break it. And then once that's done, we'll launch next week. Hopefully by the time the video is out, you guys can actually go and use the Notion integration. So the two last things that I need to add into the app is a feature flag so I can disable this for people who aren't beta testing and analytics. And that's to be able to track 
back and see how many people are actually using this feature once it's launched. And really quickly, feature flags is just a way for you to turn a feature on and off in the app. This is important because I only want this to be turned on for people who are beta testing it over the next week. And the tool that I use for both feature flags and analytics is called PostHog. Huge shout out to them for actually sponsoring this video. If you didn't know, I have been using PostHog way before they started sponsoring me. Even if they weren't sponsoring, I would 100% be recommending them anyway. If you're interested, definitely check out the link below. So let me show you guys the feature flag and the analytics. So this is PostHog. This is what I use for analytics and these feature flags. And this is their feature flag section. So you can create these feature flags. So I have one for Notion. You can use this in a bunch of different ways, but this is the way I use it. I typically set some sort of property like Notion beta enabled on the user. And when this property is set to true, that means that this feature is enabled for the user. Here's what a user looks like in PostHog. As you can see here, the Notion beta enabled is false for this user. So in this feature flag and this feature will not be enabled for this user. So if we go to Ellie, I have it set up where if the feature is not enabled, it ends up looking like this. It just says coming soon. And now if we go and turn it on, so I'll set Notion beta enabled to true, and then I'm gonna refresh the page, go back to settings integrations. Now you can see that it's available. So for people that are part of the beta, it's gonna look like this. And then for people who aren't part of it and the feature flag is turned off, it's gonna say coming soon. So this is how the feature flags work and it's a really powerful way to run beta tests. This is just scratching the surface of this feature, by the way. You can even do things like a staged rollout so that it'll incrementally roll out to 25%, 50%, then 100% of your users. And in terms of implementation, all you have to do is call it in your React app like this. So I'm able to access it here if the flag is enabled. And then right here, this is where I set that component right here. Feature flags, very simple with PostHog. And then in terms of analytics, so the key things I plan on adding when it comes to analytics are when a user adds a new workspace, and then in a workspace when they add a new database connection. I'm gonna add a chart here that shows how many people sign up and use the Notion integration. And this is gonna be really important for me to know, do enough people know about this? Have I marketed it correctly? Is it clear enough in the app? So that's why this stuff is so important. So that's how I plan on using analytics here. If you're interested, check out the YouTube video on my channel about analytics. I go in depth here, we go through some of these charts. So this is how I'm doing feature flags and analytics with PostHog. Okay, so analytics and the feature flag are in place now. We're running into a little bit of an issue with the Notion API. So some updates are not coming in for some reason. I'm trying to figure this out, but that might push us back a few hours. We're super close to finishing this up. We fixed that one bad edge case where data wasn't coming in. Pretty consistent now, but I think we really need a break. We're gonna take a break, run some errands. When we come back, we're gonna try to wrap this up. We just wrapped up everything. There were so many bugs that we had to fix here. I think it's actually pretty stable, or at least stable enough for the beta testers to use it. So that's the next step. We're gonna get maybe like five or 10 people to test this thing. They're inevitably gonna find some issues. We're gonna correct it over the next week. And then hopefully we'll do a more public launch in one week, which is when this video should be going live. So if everything went according to plan, you should be able to go into Ellie and use this integration today. So this is a fun one. It took a little bit longer than anticipated. There were just a bunch of annoyances with the Notion API and some edge cases that we didn't account for. I think we did a pretty good job for a weekend hackathon. Thanks so much for Finney for being here. <laughs> Dude, why is this so weird? I don't know. Thank you guys so much for watching. Thanks for Finney for being here. This is fun. Comment below if you like this type of video. We'll probably do another one in the future. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video. Also,